This parking meter at UCLA it charges four different prices uh, during the daytime, and it doesn't even say anywhere on the meter what the price is until you touch any button, and then it tells you what the price is at that time. Uh, the first hour is three dollars, and the second hour is four dollars, so it can have an accelerating payment. Uh, uh, for the, the longer you park, the more you park for the additional hour. I think that's a much better idea than having um, uh, time limits on parking. Some cities are beginning to do that. The first hour is two dollars, the second is three, the third is four, and so on like that. So that uh, most people will, to avoid the, um, uh, the higher payments, they'll either park off street or they won't park as long. But if you are willing to pay for parking, uh, you can pay for a longer time. So the city gets more money and the driver gets more convenient convenience. You know, some of you probably <laughs> suspected as students the professors seem to have a lot of spare time on their hands. And I think it's <laughs> there is some truth to that. So I, I set up uh, my uh, camera on a tripod across from uh, eight parking spaces uh, at one of these uh, 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 multi-space parking meters. You can see somebody paying for parking at that. And on average, at a block in the United States, there are eight parallel parked cars. So this is like the number of cars on a typical uh, 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 street, except that they're, these are diagonal. And I think this is the exact, the, the right, this is the right price for parking. Wouldn't you say that? The, the park is well used, most of the spaces are occupied, but if you want to park, there's a space waiting for you. So I was wondering, well, I took pictures every four minutes for an hour to see what would happen. The two end cars uh, didn't, uh, uh, didn't move uh, because you could park for more than an hour if you pay for more than an hour. And you see here's four minutes later, you see well, one car is left and other cars arrived. So it's still uh, uh, what you would want to see, well used but readily available. And then people come and they, they go and usually you see them paying for parking. There was one time during the hour they were all occupied. Four minutes later, there's a vacant space. Um, and you see people heading to, sometimes there are two spaces. Once there were three, uh, but then it filled up. Now, does parking work this well in Philadelphia? Does it work this well in any city that you're from? Would you say that if you owned a restaurant or a jewelry store or anything like this, wouldn't you like to see the parking in front of your store managed like this? So that the, the, there are plenty of customers, but there's a space available for everybody. So I just don't think it can get better than that. Um, uh, so I just did a bar chart. Well, 60 percent of the time there was uh, one uh, space is pretty good. Two spaces, well, that's okay. There was a small percentage of the time there's none or one. But I don't think you'll get it any better than this. Uh, that given the fact that demand varies and uh, during the hour, uh, that you're never going to get one space uh, <laughs> all the time. But on the other hand, if there's no spaces on this block, you could probably just turn the corner on the next block and there'll be a space. So that if we aim for um, uh, this, this, um, this kind of occupants, the, the people will get accustomed to the, the idea they don't have to uh, drive around for 11 minutes hunting for a parking space. So the right price is, is it shouldn't be higher. If, if they're higher, then there'll be uh, a lot of vacant spaces and students and anybody else who want to use the space couldn't use it. It shouldn't be lower. Uh, so it's the Goldilocks principle. Uh, it's also like the Supreme Court's <laughs> definition of pornography. I, I know it when I see it. The, the only way you can say whether the price is right is to look at the result. And that's what I think cities do not do when they say they set the price. Should it be $3 or $3 and a quarter? And you hear the, you know, sometimes the city council meetings are on the radio and you hear them argue for an hour about changing the price 25 cents um, uh, without any mention of what the results are. The only way you could tell whether the price is right is to look at the results. It's as simple as that. And if you do that, if you get the price right, you won't have cruising for parking, which is driving around, uh, hunting for uh, a space. We've all done it. 
Uh, some of you may have done it this morning, for all I know. But we've all done it. Everybody understands it. Um, here was um, when I was speaking in New York, in front of the hotel, uh, there was a, a on street parking was a dollar an hour, and off street parking was, uh, I think it, it's actually $20 for the first hour when you add the city's uh, parking tax. They have a wonderfully precise parking tax of 18.375%. Just think how carefully they must have thought that through <laughs> to get the tax exactly right. They knew exactly what the parking price should be. So we added up as $20 an hour. So how long would you hunt for a curb? If you wanted to park for an hour, how long would you drive around looking for a dollar an hour parking rather than pay $20 off street? The city is telling you to cruise for parking. 